Hello guys, today I want to show you an example demo project of migrating the data if you want to change the structure and migrate the old data to some new column. And this is based on the example from Laracast forum. For example, you had a city field in the users table as a string like London, New York or whatever. And then at some point you decided to have cities as a separate table and then add users city ID with foreign key to the cities. How to perform that migration? safely, where to put that data migration script or SQL or whatever, and how to make it quite fast if you have a lot of data. So in my example, in my demo project, I've recreated users table with 60,000 rows and city as a string. And our goal is to create the city table, then save those different cities in that table, then add the city ID and update the values. And we will do that in four steps. And those four steps will be actually database migrations. In my opinion and in my experience, if you perform the data migration, it could be as one of the option part of the database migrations. Although technically migrations is for changing the schema, but you can also add anything there. So you change the schema, then update the data. You can do that with raw SQL or with more complex logic like in our case but it should be all executed when you run PHP Artisan Migrate. Let's take a look at an example. So first the structure. I've just created two migration files, creating the cities and adding city ID. And the content for those should be, for example, table string name of the city. And then for the city ID, we have table foreign ID of city ID, nullable by default, because for now we don't have any values and then constrained to the table of cities. Great. So we can already migrate structure PHP artisan migrate. Successful. And now we have those fields empty. The third migration will be about migrating the data. So let's generate PHP artisan make migration, for example, update cities data in users table like this and we will not have any schema table or schema create in that migration we will only take care of the data so we can delete that thing and start from scratch and i will show you a few examples how to do that and how to do it faster first let's do it the straightforward way the most straightforward for each of all the users then we populate the array of the cities if the city doesn't exist we create that and then add the new city to the array of user city name to the ID and then update the user. And now let's try it out how long it takes for 60,000 users. We do PHP artisan migrate and wait. And the result is 60 seconds. So roughly a second for every thousand users. What if you have a million users, then you would wait for quite a long time. Let's optimize that. First thing we can do is chunk the data. And here's the code for that. I've pasted that from my notes. So instead of doing user all, you do user chunk and then users here, you have cities and you constantly update that with new values. And let's see if this is faster. So I've deleted the user ID value. Also, let's delete the migration like it never happened. And let's run that again. PHP artisan migrate and we wait. Interestingly, the result is even slower or roughly the same 64 seconds or 60 seconds. So that chunking of the data doesn't really help in this case. So let's return to for each user all and I will show you a better way. So what is the main bottleneck of this structure? It's actually the updating. So we have 60,000 queries to update each user once, right? Why don't we group that? Because in reality, what we are doing, updating a lot of users with the same city ID. And actually, we don't care about the user IDs. So user update contains user object, which we don't really care about. If you think about it, what we need to do, we have the cities array. So after all that loop for each of the cities as city name, city ID, we need to launch user where city equals city name update city ID to the value of city ID. 
So in reality, the more cities you have, the more queries will there be. But there's totally fewer cities than 60,000. In my case, in my database, I have only 12 different cities. So instead of 60,000 queries, this should generate only 12 queries. Let's try it out. Let's comment this out and let's run the migration again. Again, I've deleted the data and let's run the migration and it totally won't take 60 seconds. I won't even pause in this video because I expect that to run in five seconds. So from 60 seconds to five and as a proof that it did work in the database. So have the new migration great in the users table. We have, for example, Copenhagen and the city ID of 37. If we go to the cities table, we have 12 cities from 37 to 48. And in the users table, let's just take a look at Copenhagen's 37 here and 37 here. So it seems like it's the correct data. So now the final fourth migration after you make sure that the data is correct and it's changed in the code everywhere to reference city ID, you can then remove this column for the future use so it wouldn't take additional space. I see quite a lot of people leave that for the historical reasons or maybe it seems too risky to remove the field. But if you are quite sure that the city ID migration was successful, and especially if you have automated tests to prove that, you can do PHP artisan, make migration, remove city from users table. And then in that migration file, you can do table drop column city. And let's run that PHP artisan migrate. If it's successful, should be good. If we refresh that users table, we don't have city anymore. We have only city ID. So this was my example, how to perform the data migration in general, how I would do that. Maybe you have some other ways or other methods, shoot in the comments below. And also I've shown you how to do it faster. Sometimes it's not about knowing eloquent better or knowing some tips or tricks or features. It's just about logical thinking. How many queries should you run? And if you want more examples of such critical thinking, I have two courses from my Teachable that I can recommend. 10 Laravel refactoring examples. And one of the examples actually is about changing the database structure from what I remember. And there's also better eloquent performance, again, with examples, because I'm a big fan of practical knowledge and practical teaching and learning. So the ways that I suggest to improve eloquent performance with different queries or different structure, you can find all of that at laraveldaily.teachable.com. And by purchasing the courses, you support this YouTube channel, because then I can continue shooting free daily videos on YouTube. That's it for now and see you guys in other videos.